Yeah, well, you might have a quirky kid, <laughs> but does a quirky not... kid mean that your kid needs therapy, right? Yeah. And so this is where you kind of seek some guidance from maybe mm -hmm. uh, the teacher or whatever, and you go, you know, we see a little something with our kiddo. Do you see him being yeah. out of what we would consider that normal yeah. range? Look at the specific concerns and needs of your child. Like, mm -hmm. are they dealing with anxiety or anger or fear that is debilitating them, that is keeping them from doing their normal routines of school and soccer and hanging out with the friends in the neighborhood? Like, do you see a pattern? Again, not just one incident, but a pattern that is different and, and kind of concerning to you. Rock Solid Families wants to thank Maxwell Construction for sponsoring the Rock Solid Families podcast. For over 30 years, Maxwell Construction has been a leader in turning dreams into realities, building schools, banks, restaurants, and many other commercial and public facilities. Maxwell Construction has made it their priority to not just build buildings, but to build into their community. So if you have any construction needs, Call them at 812-537-2200. Welcome to Rock Solid Families. This is Merle Hutchinson alongside of Linda Hutchinson. Linda, how are you doing? I'm good, but I think you're a little bitter. About what? <laughs> because I'm, I might be leaving to work remotely soon. Oh, yeah. So part of our show today, we're going to talk about separation anxiety. And Linda is actually leaving me. And oh. as we are recording this, it's been in the single digits mm -hmm. and even sub-zero weather. Yeah, and you're going to just head down to actually, Florida in the sunshine. You, this oh, airs, but it's for your dad's care. That's right. Right, yeah. Well, I don't know if it's for my dad's care, but, you know, keep it It's for Linda's care, yeah. But, um, no, so as, as this airs, I will be... Um, watching it in sunny Florida, but again, working on projects. I got nothing for you. Remote, I, oh remote learning goodness. and growing and that, working. Guys? Like I'm she's <laughs> got to qualify. All right. Hey, you're doing the same thing in February. Didn't so I don't have to hear say it. that. I so, wanted people to feel sorry for me for a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, at least a couple weeks. Yeah. You know, actually, we are um, handling a topic that we get asked a lot. Um, people call our office all the time and. And that is the question, should I take my child to therapy? You know, is, is what I'm seeing, is this a valid concern that needs addressing with a professional? And so we really just want to talk about that because Rock Solid Families does faith-based coaching and right. we work with kids, teens, adults, couples, families. And so we work with the family system, but there's times where we're working with a child and we get that call all the time. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to be talking about how we handle it and how maybe you should handle it when you have a concern or a question about that. Yeah. So hopefully some things for you to think about, especially yeah. if you have a kiddo who's kind of making you think twice about mm -hmm. how they're actually doing. So before we do that, we want to thank our sponsors. We want to thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions and Maxwell Construction for sponsoring the Rock mm -hmm. Solid Family Podcast show so we want to thank those guys for that mm -hmm. um, also hon I do want to put out a little reminder there yeah. our, our banquet that we have which mm. is our first partnership banquet uh, is March 7th yeah. over at uh, higher ground Re uh, retreat center mm -hmm. um, so we're looking forward to that yeah um, so if you are interested in that and supporting continuing to come behind and supporting the work that we do at rock solid families mm -hmm. please uh, feel free to reach out to us you can call the office at 812 576 Six seventy six twenty five, or you can go to just our website, rocksolidfamilies.org, and uh, reach out there on the questions. Actually, the invitation will be on our Facebook page, Rock Solid Families Facebook page, and you can actually just click that QR code and um, join us. Yeah, it's it's going to be exciting. It's filling fast, and I'm super excited. Yeah. We're we're partnering together with local churches and nonprofits and community leaders and families and businesses and schools, and so it'll just be a great 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 night of celebration, inspiration, appreciation, and really some challenge. You got any more too. Asians there? Get some <laughs> Asians in there. So that is Thursday, March 7th. Um, open the doors at six o'clock and it's a buffet dinner banquet. And so we'd just love to have you there. There's no cost. We would like to have your participation. <laughs> 
there's a shun. So, okay, so let's talk about this. So should I seek counseling or therapy for my child? Um, so here's some things to consider, you know. Um, we just want to help you walk alongside you as parents who is probably, who's listening. The child's probably not listening, good chance. Right. And so before you jump into therapy, there's some things to consider as a parent that you you might have a greater influence than you think and really support your child in ways without even reaching out to a professional. And so there's a lot of times situations that you can handle yourself with just some support or direction. Yeah, and on a regular basis, all my years at Bright Elementary and then all of our years working uh, here at Rock Solid Families, uh, we get people, we get phone calls on a regular basis and say, hey, do you know of a therapist mm-hmm. or do you work with these My child's these five, kids? six. And, and you know, you, you want to help people people but uh, frequently they don't realize how uh, how much more effective they might be able to mm, be now mm-hmm. there are situations that are completely out of maybe uh, their their scope but for the mm-hmm. most part I want you to think about this you know you have to think about um, if let's say your kid is struggling with anxiety or depression or just handling um, being bullied at school or something like that okay all of those things could use outside help but you're going to go possibly see a therapist, counselor, coach, and you're going to see them for one hour, maybe once a week. Mm-hmm. And even that's not going to be a good solid hour just due mm-hmm. to everything else. And I will say a lot of kids are not real excited about going to see that person. <laughs> or say a whole lot when they come. Yeah, and so they know? might be kind of shut down. And so you oftentimes undersell mm-hmm. yourself in terms of if you actually were the one who came in and mm. got some coaching, got some help to say, hey, how could we as coaches impart some different things to think about mm-hmm. into you? Because you're going to be the one who can go and study up on it, can learn more about it. Mm-hmm. And then you're with your kid every waking hour practically <laughs> compared to our one hour a week. And so, so often mm. this is more beneficial for you to come in and learn a different approach mm-hmm. to maybe handling the kid or parenting practice than really to spend the time or money on yeah. the one hour for your kiddo. But so, not, not always, okay. Yeah, and, and the younger, the more that applies, I believe, yeah. because you're not gonna get a whole lot out of a four or five or six year old, which is a lot of times when issues start to arise when they're in school and around other kids or whatever. And so, you know, that is something to, to consider. And, and also sometimes we're seeing, and a lot of times, hon, it's like, eight out of 10 times, it's a family system issue. Sure, yeah. It's how we're approaching it, how we respond to it, how we you know, set the boundaries or don't set the boundaries. And so we really walk alongside so many parents that say, and that's why we literally say to all of our minors, we wanna see the parents first. We wanna see the parents first alone so that we can hear what's been going on. What have you tried? You know, how's their response been? That kind of stuff. So we can kind of get a game plan and also kind of assess with the parents, right. like what they're seeing and what they've tried. Yeah. Another thing that we just want you guys to be aware of is um, so many things in our culture can be um, can be contagious, right? Like if, <laughs> yes. if everybody is talking about something. If you can't quite figure out what might be going on with your kid and the next thing you know, you read a couple of articles mm-hmm. or it happens to show up on the newspaper uh, report mm-hmm. somewhere or whatever, or a friend is talking about it, you kind of go, oh, I think my kid has that. Yeah. I think, you know, and so yeah. one thing, you, before you even go to counsel, you might want to just seek wise counsel. Yeah. In other words, how about um, talk to the teacher's kids? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's another person who's been with your kid a whole lot, probably in during the school year, more teacher. hours than you. What did you I said say? your teacher's kids. Your teacher's kids. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. Kids so, teachers. Yeah. The teacher's kids are never going to give good <laughs> advice. <laughs> But the, the idea of just going going to somebody mm-hmm. who's in the know, yep. um, gets to see your kid in a slightly different setting. Mm-hmm. And so th- that's good counsel, right? Maybe a trusted relative. And what, I want to be careful with that because a lot of people will want to weigh in yeah. on how you're this handling your kid. falling with grandma. You know? Yeah. And so you, it's a trusted uh, person mm-hmm. where you can say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about this with mm-hmm. my kiddo here. What do you know? What do you think? Mm-hmm. Uh, what What is your experience with this? Just to help you think about things in a slightly different way yeah sometimes it could be their school counselor
counselor. That's what you did for the last 20 years at yep. Bright Elementary. But also maybe a youth minister, youth pastor, where you can just say, hey, this is what I'm seeing at home. They're very defiant or they're very fearful or they don't want to go or you know be around other kids. So what are you seeing? You know, And so is that normal? Is that age appropriate? Because that's really the key. Sometimes we are so blinded by what we see in front of us that we don't have a better perspective or a greater understanding of that age or that season of life or that situation. And so is that out of line for their age? That's a that's a really great first step to talk about with trusted people around your child. Yeah, we're not talking about medical issues per se, like whether mm-hmm. your kid has strep throat or not. <laughs> we're talking typically about behavioral, mm-hmm. emotional, mental type health yeah. issues. And so most of the time, those things fall more into a spectrum. Mm-hmm. And so so like, let's just look at ADHD. I mean, we could mm-hmm. all say that we are on the spectrum of having <laughs> ADHD, yeah. all right? When it becomes a problem, when it starts to interfere with mm. daily living, whether it's school or work or interaction with other people, that's when you, you, you start to get out to the edges of those spectrums. Mm-hmm. And so um, we, we just want to see like when you, you use the word normal, okay? Mm-hmm. Well, this is kind of that bell curve thing. You mm-hmm. know, are, are we within one standard deviation? You know, yeah, you well, might have a- very counselorish. Yeah, well, you might have a quirky kid, <laughs> but does a quirky not... kid mean that your kid needs therapy, right? Yeah. And so this is where you kind of seek some guidance from maybe mm-hmm. uh, the teacher or whatever, and you go, you know, we see a little something with our kiddo. Do you see him being yeah. out of what we would consider that normal yeah. range? With that being said, though, sometimes there are situations that are completely beyond the scope of an average parent. I mean, full disclosure here, our th- our five kiddos, we've had children in therapy before. Uh, our three youngest were brought in through the foster care system. They were in therapy when we met them. Right. And there was need along the way that were outside of our reach. And we do this for a living. So sometimes parents aren't the right person yep. and that they're not going to be able to get to the core of the issue. And so look at the specific concerns and needs of your child. Like, mm-hmm. are they dealing with anxiety or anger or fear that is debilitating them, that is keeping them from from doing their normal routines of school and soccer and hanging out with the friends in the neighborhood. Like, do you see a pattern? Again, not just one incident, but a pattern that is different and and kind of concerning to you. Yeah. The next thing is, and this is kind of something that you need to be aware of even before you get into this. And so this is this is kind of the relationship building, the open communication mm-hmm. that you've established with your kid. If if you and your kiddo don't talk and communicate well, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you start to say, man, I wonder if something's wrong, but you they haven't developed a comfort level. And sometimes that's mm-hmm. just even between parents. Like uh, our daughter would probably be more comfortable <laughs> talking with Linda than with me. Mm-hmm. It's not that we can't communicate, but some of these yeah. topics she's going to say, uh, I don't know that I want to take this to dad. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So establishing a level of relationship Mm -hmm. with effective communication and that's something that you set that groundwork for early and often okay this is so this is ongoing that's why it's important even for us dads you know you got to know where you can communicate well with your kids all right and moms you know you have to know you if we're always in the discipline mode if we're Mm -hmm. always in the nagging mode oftentimes especially with our teenagers they're just going to shut down i'm not bringing this to mom and dad i know where they're going to go with this and i'm guilty of that i'm not going to lie i I have to be very intentional when our son or daughter brings something to me that I don't shut them down by mm. my quick reaction or my my negative comment. Like, are you kidding me? Like, our son just spent his birthday money on a very expensive bottle of cologne. And I just kind of want to look at him like, what were you thinking? But it's like, you know, that was his choice. That was his birthday money, his right? money. And right. so it I still smells really uh, bad. You know, I mean, we're not going to. It's uh, like this gigantic cloud. You, but you the know, the rest I, of us are walking around with gas mask while he thinks he smells really bad. And I good. definitely had an opinion, but you know, I've got to keep those lines of communication open with him so that he feels safe talking to me about girls, right? Or school or uh, fears in his sports or whatever. And so please, mom and dad, it's so important that they feel safe and that they feel comforted and accepted by even their struggles and their questions don't don't look at it like that's a dumb question yeah and you said before so let's move it on to the next thing some things to look for you know one of those things is the patterns mm-hmm. right and the per- 
pervasiveness of it, how frequently that we're seeing this. But there are some things that are going to take our immediate attention, yeah. right? And so when we see a, a severe, what we might think of as a severe level, especially when we're talking about self-harm mm -hmm. or violence or lashing out, you know, and possibly hurting somebody else, right. when we, that goes to a different level, right? So mm -hmm. sometimes that's like, well, we're going to bypass all these that's other the steps. escalation clause, right? yeah. And, and we're going to say no, you know, and, mm -hmm. and we're going to go right to this. And so mm -hmm. there are even times, and I'm going to the extreme here, but there are even times where we involve police or mm -hmm. the, the life squad. If our kid is mm -hmm. talking heavy duty things like that, that yeah. very well can be out of our scope. And we don't Definitely. sit and hem and haul around if our kid's threatening something like yeah. suicide. You know, it's not a good time for us mm -hmm. to walk around and go, hmm, I wonder who I should call. No, yeah. we, we go right to uh, getting the help and then mm -hmm. we'll deal with it from that level. Yeah, even promiscuity is, is a warning sign that something has happened. You know, um, you mentioned uh, illegal behavior, you know, drinking and drugs and um, sneaking out, um, suicidal ideation. Those are all real cries for help. Please, please do not ignore that. Don't minimize that or normalize like that. That is, those are serious things that you want to get professional help with. And that's where rock solid families and other, you know, licensed therapists come in where we're like, um, yes, we want to walk alongside you. And this is where we do want to meet with the parents first. And sometimes they are so fearful and they're calling us and saying, we need to come in today. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we try to um, accommodate these emergencies, but obviously there is a suicidal hotline now right. um, that I just went blank on that you can go to if you need an immediate we'll get that to you here yes Drew. immediate yeah. response to your child's cry for help so please do not forget and do not um minimize that cry for help yeah well, let's take a look at another thing and this is critical to see how effective even getting a therapy um, therapist together is what's who is a therapist what is the relationship like? Mm -hmm. What is their specialty? What, what are the qualifications? And then how will they mm -hmm. relate to my kid? In other words, getting the right therapist. And guys, this is something that I don't care really um, all of the letters behind somebody's name. Therapy comes primarily with a trusted relationship. And so we can have the, the wisest counselor in the world, but if they don't establish good re mm. relationship with your child, then right away there's this off button mm -hmm. that goes on the kid's head and says, uh, this is mm. weird, I don't want to be here. So, mm. uh, And oftentimes this is why Lynn and I want to meet with a parent first where mm -hmm. we want to say, hey, tell us about your kid a little bit uh, mm -hmm. so that they can meet us as well. Because if they see that, man, I don't know if my kid's <laughs> going to be a good fit, we're very upfront mm -hmm. to say, you know, hey, let us help find the right mix yeah. and fit for you. So finding the right therapist in terms of qualifications, mm -hmm. in terms of relationship, in terms of gender, yes. right? Yes. And, and, and those kinds of things. Yes. So it's important for us to look at this. That's why, I mean, even though Merle and I worked with teenagers our entire career, you know, junior high for me, high school, and then even down to elementary for you, but we know that now we are kind of getting older not oh, we're not yeah, old we're older there, and we're parents and grandparents and so that's why we've hired our adolescent specialist Meredith Scudder who really walks alongside mm -hmm. our teenagers especially and some younger kids with trauma but especially those teenagers so she's more relatable right that she's yep. more their age she's a single young adult and so that makes a difference um going back to the suicide hotline yeah, give us 988 that number. 988 instead of 911 it's 988 I was going to do a 922 or again, something again if you can't get into somebody we understand that you can call children's hospital or you can go to children's hospital you can go through their emergency room but please do not take those threats lightly you need to take them seriously it shows the child like we don't mess around with this when mm -hmm. you tell us that you don't want to live anymore or you're going to burn down the house or you're going to kill your brother those are serious accusations and and cries for help that you need to take seriously and get help for immediately yeah yeah very important stuff yeah. okay so let's say we make the decision to look into a therapist or mm -hmm. counselor once we do that guys it's it's a 
a lot of times people want that quick fix where you come in this one time. It's kind of mm-hmm. like when I go to the chiropractor, right? I want to be one <laughs> and done. Adjustment. And sure enough, they come in and go, well, you know, we're going to have 10 more visits here. And you're like, oh, man. But it's kind of mm-hmm. the same deal because it's a process mm-hmm. of working through something. And so this is where the patience and the commitment to the process, mm-hmm. right? You have to commit to the process. You also have to have a good counselor or coach who can say, um, I, I think I got the direction a little bit wrong on this mm-hmm. and admit when they're not doing the job that they want to get done. And, and that's why it's important for us yeah. when we're working with kids to meet with the parents intermittently. It might be at mm-hmm. the beginning or the end of a session or, or might be an entire session alone dedicated to that where we say, okay, are we moving where we want to be moving here? Yes. Are we seeing some results? But yes. all of this, guys, it's not a one and done. Mm-hmm. And if you think it's a one and done, then you're really not, mm. you're more out for uh, the quick fix and yeah. not necessarily, are we helping our kid? And so meeting with those parents is kind of like jump starting that process and creating a plan. You know, hun, it made me think of our Families Rock series that mm. we do. We actually have an opening on on Saturday, January 27th mm-hmm. from 9 to 12 or 8.30 to 12 down at Ivy Tech Riverfront um, location, down Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Lawrenceburg, Indiana. If you are ready to jumpstart this process for a family system work that you as a family, you as parents learn how to, you know, walk alongside your children better or maybe get some new tools, we would love for you to join us. And yes, it's, um, it's a late notice, depending on when you're listening to this, maybe even after the fact, but we're going to try to be doing this monthly at Ivy Tech because we're mm-hmm. partnering with um, our local court system, and a lot of families are court ordered to come. But we also would love other families who it's are just open wanting to, to be. It's yeah. open to anybody. Yeah. Um, there is a cost; it's seventy five dollars for the class, which is three hours of counseling, basically. And so we're walking alongside families and, and parents. So we would love to have you at Families Rock on Saturday, January twenty seventh, or it's going to be again the last Saturday of February. February, so depending on when you're listening to this, Mm -hmm. um, we would love for you to join us. So call us at our office, 812-576-ROCK, and just express an interest, and we'll get back with you about that. Which takes us to the very last part. Mm -hmm. Guys, oftentimes, it's the whole family involvement or family Mm -hmm. dynamic that needs to be looked at here. And so we're probably more than likely not fixing a kid we're probably (laughs) looking at an entire dynamic and how it's going on Mm -hmm. and so how when those players start coming together they create different forces and tensions you know and so that's why when we talk about uh, families rock by the way that's a one-day thing but it's not meant to be the one-time fix it's it's you use the right word hunt it's a jump start to say here are some things we need Mm -hmm. to start thinking about and how we can start to approach things a little bit differently to hopefully get better results so family and Involvement is extremely critical if mm-hmm. we're, I mean, in many situations to handling this kid well and better. So seeking professional help can really be an opportunity for growth and healing for your whole family, just, not just the child. And it also shows a commitment to your child's well-being, to your family's health, and you're not minimizing the importance of of getting help. So we would love for you to reach out. Again, rocksolidfamilies.org. You can hit the contact button. You can also at the bottom of every page, it says um, make an appointment or, you know, connect with your local pastor, youth minister, uh, counselor, coach, something that can say, okay, today we're going to start a jump start on getting healthy. All right, guys. So we hope that that was helpful. And we hope that if there's anything that we can help with that you would reach out. Uh, we want to close out by saying thanks to Maxwell Construction and Casey's Outdoor Solutions for their continued support of what we do here at Rock Solid Families. And so that's about all I got. How about if we yeah. just say? Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to the Rock Solid Families podcast, building a stronger community, one family at a time. Make it a great day. Rock Solid Families wants to thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions for sponsoring the Rock Solid Families podcast. Casey's has grown to be one of the largest and most unique garden centers and gift shops in the Cincinnati Tri-State area. Whether you are looking to take on that next landscape project or simply add a little home decor to your house, Casey's has you covered. Located at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. 
Call them today at 812-537-3800. Let Casey's help you add beauty to your home.